Hello everyone and welcome to my polytunnel. It has finally decided to stop raining and uh, I am able to do a video that I have been asked to do by a couple of different viewers. Um, this video is going to be a very back to basics for the simplex. It's going to be, I got a simplex and I didn't get a manual with it. I've got a simplex and I'm a visual learner rather than a sort of read text learner. Um, I've got a simplex. If I turn it on, what do I do with it after that sort of video? Um, I'm going to go through what's on the screen, what you see, what the different modes mean, how you change the modes. I'll try how you ground balance. We'll see how it goes in the polytunnel. Um, and we're just going to run through the absolute basics for people um, just so they can see when you turn it on, what do you do, how do you do it, and um, so there you go. I'll flip you around so we can actually see Plexi, my machine, um, and you'll also get a wee glimpse around the uh, polytunnel as well. So uh, anyway, enough of that, let's get turned around and let's look at the simplex. Okay, so here we are, quick run around of the new polytunnel. So it's a bit over there, it's been all mulched up. Got all the seedlings on the go for the winter crops, the kale and the lettuce and the endive and the Chinese cabbage. And then we've got a courgette in there and some various other stuff. That's the snow peas there. Uh, that is some Nero kale there with some chervil, potting bench and many, many mottos along here. And some peppers and various other things, ties that I have pulled all the ties off, but I am now, there's a few little hangers on that I'm growing for seed. And some purple, purple sprouting broccoli there. So, anyway, enough of that nonsense. Just so I'll show you where we are filming. Um, it's taken me a little bit to make this video because the last two times I've tried, it's been raining so hard, I couldn't hear myself think in here. So, here we are. We have the simplex. There she is. Mine is dirty. Well, she's scrubbed and she's uh, cleaned with um, car wash and wax, which helps the dirt come off. But many, many hours I have spent with her and some of it's just ingrained. I do need to put a new strain protector on because that one's just gotten a bit bubbly and rough, but you will still be able to see. So I have the SP24 coil on her at the moment. I'll have to excuse the clinky clinky and the little dog next to me. She is having her breakfast, uh, but she is my little shadow and goes everywhere that I go if I am at home. So she is uh, here. Anyway, so to turn the simplex on, we want this button here, right in the middle. Push the button, hold it till you see the screen light up, let go. Make sure you let go, because if you hold it too long, you can factory reset it. Now, my screen has come on on the last settings that I used. So the last settings that I used was Park 2, which is this one right here. You can see there's even a little 2 up in the corner, Park 2. And I had it two bars down on the sensitivity. I have, let's see, I'm trying to look at this. I have three bars of battery out of five and there is no soil mineralization. You have a list of things across the bottom, which is your settings that you can adjust. This is a depth meter for your simplex of how deep your finds are. This will be where your number comes in, which is what you are looking for to determine whether something is iron or non-ferrous. These are your modes across here. And this here, is where we notch things out. This is five digit increments of VDI numbers. So this number here, that's zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, etc., etc., across. And you can turn these black and your detector will not tell you when it finds something in that range. I do not ever run anything notched out. That is my own personal choice because I, oh, the dog's tag is uh, copper alloy, as you can see. Um, the, I don't run anything notched out because I want to know everything that is in the soil. I don't, I want all the information I can get. Some people 
if they are looking for a very specific coin, say you're in the US, you're in a park, you know exactly what your coins ring up as, um, you can notch everything out except that specific thing and then you will only be told about that specific thing. But if there's a gold ring sitting next to it, you might not you might not be told about that because gold is funny on the simplex because of the frequency the machine operates at and gold can come in all over the place. Silver can actually come in all over the place. Silver can come in where aluminium comes in, which is down here at 18, 19, 20. But silver hammers in the UK can come in in that range. Silver can also come in at 90 to 95. So if you go and notch everything out, except for one very specific range, you may be losing something like a gold ring or a silver pendant if you are somewhere that doesn't have hammers because they can come in at different numbers. But that is entirely your choice. You set your machine up the way you want it set up. Okay, so your screen comes on, you're looking at this. What does it all mean? This mode is field mode. To change modes, you go down here to these buttons, the plus and the minus, and you just push it quite hard because it's waterproof, it's very stiff. So you push it, you're pushing it once, and there we go, now we're on field. Field mode is the deepest of the modes. Field mode sees the deepest, but it's not as good as separating signals that are next to each other. This is called recovery. Its recovery speed is slower because it's looking so deep. Your machine can only do a set number of things. It's like your phone, how many apps can you have open? Or your laptop, how many tabs can you have open? If you are wanting it to look really, really deep, it can't be fast. It's an excellent machine. It sees a lot of things, but this is about you setting it up the way you want it. So. If you are in a field, and I'm just going to turn the sensitivity down, you'll notice that this has now jumped up. That's because when I last used field, I had full sensitivity on. That was in my last video. The sensitivity stays to the last thing you set it in, in each mode. So I had this in part two. If I go back to part two, my sensitivity will go back to five. But because I last used field in full sensitivity, it's back on to full sensitivity. I'm just going to turn it down, which is these up and down arrows. Just going to turn it down a little so she stops chattering because she's picking up the bars in the polytunnel. That's how good she is. Okay, so field mode is deep. But if you have iron and say silver close by each other, it will struggle to pick them both up depending depending on how far apart they are depending on how deep they are depending on how big the iron is if you have big iron and you have a small silver coin next to it it will see the iron because it's putting all its energy all of its ram so to speak into looking deep as opposed to looking quick you also must swing slower with this mode because the detector needs time to look deep. So swing from side to side about a second. Nice and slow and steady so it has time to look deep. Okay, now depending on whether you have a second hand machine that came with 2.68 or you have a new machine or a machine that has been put onto 2.77 or 2.78 or even 2.76, you may or may not have two park modes. If you have a 2.6 something machine, you will only have one. If you have a 2.7 something machine, you will have two. That is because this was brought in with the updates to the 2.7 whatever. 2.76 was the first one. Um, this was in preparation for the new coils. This was to optimize the machine for the small coils. Um, and that's a whole nother video about whether you go to 2.77 or 2.68. Stay on 2.68 
but if your machine was manufactured on 2.7 something, do not find by hook or by crook a 2.68 program and attempt to install it on your machine. Because if you do, that will be the end of your coil. You cannot, the machines that were made with 2.76, 2.77 and 2.78 cannot run 2.68 absolutely cannot, will brick your machine and it will not be covered under warranty because you will have had to have found that program somewhere. It is not in general distribution by Nocta Macro uh, and they will say it is your own fault. So just a word of warning. Now, if you have 2.7 something, you will have two park modes. As I said, if you have 2.68, you will have one park mode. Park mode one in the 2.7 program is in between field and park two. 2.7's park two is actually 2.6's park one. And I'll explain what's the difference and then you'll understand. So park one in 2.7 is faster than field. That means its recovery speed is quicker. If there are two things next to each other, it can see them better. It will pick it up as you swing over and it will be able to see one and then another. And it will be able to discriminate, the new word discriminate, between the two signals. But because it does this, you cannot see as deep. It is not a huge distance. The simplex sees tremendously deep on all the modes. So it is not a huge distance, but there is a difference. So depending on how trashy your site is, how much you need it to pick out things, how busy your site is, you will want to choose between field and park one and park two. Park two is faster still it can discriminate even better between signals that are next to each other. But because of this, it sees even less deep than park one. If you have a 2.68 machine, you only have one park. That is the equivalent to what on my machine is park two, and it is the faster and shallower version. When they updated to 2.76, they gave us one in between park and field, and it is slower, but deeper. So it was sort of the medium program. And people ask me, what should I run? What mode should I run in? Um, which is quite difficult if I have no other information, but all I can say is if in doubt, go to park one, if you have a 2.7, whatever machine, because park one is sort of the medium program. It's, it's in the middle of everything. So park one. Park two, really trashy sites. You know, you have lots of signals right next to each other. That's park two. It's shallower, again, not hugely shallower, but shallower. You also swing the coil faster. Not like a maniac, but certainly it likes it when you swing over the signal quicker because it helps it see the difference. If you sing over, swing over it slow, it doesn't do as well. And if you've seen my other videos, you will see sort of the speeds that I'm checking out a signal with when I'm going through the modes to check a signal. Park two is quite a quick swing. Park one, slower swing, field slower yet. Okay, so that's gotten us through. And we'll just zoom back out here so you can see. So that's park one, that's park two. This is beach. That one there is beach mode. That's on all the versions. Beach, you will notice something has changed at the top. What has changed at the top is suddenly the first three bars are notched out. What Nocta Macro is doing with this is they are taking iron away. They're trying to take away rusty bottle caps. They're trying to take away those rusty, trashy signals. Unfortunately, in my experience, rusty bottle caps come in up here at 95 and 96. Um, and I don't actually use beach mode except to ground balance in beach, at the beach, 
because it is set up for you to be able to ground balance when there's a lot of salinity in the soil, when there is a lot of salt in the soil, like at a beach, it has a special setting that allows you to ground balance the machine, i.e. cancel out the mineral signal that the machine's getting and look at the ground as a clean slate instead of reading the salt as a signal. So the problem with beach is these are notched out and you cannot put them back. They are permanently notched out. You will not see these numbers when you are running this machine on beach. Therefore, I don't use it because as I said before, I want everything open. I want to see it all. Um, so you would ground balance in beach at the beach and then you would change over to one of the other modes depending on what you were looking for. And I would use usually probably park two at the beach, maybe park one because nothing at the beach is usually very deep and you want separation of signals because there's lots of stuff there. So that's what I would normally do. Right, the final mode is all metal. Now you hear her starting to hum already. All metal only has one tone. It is good for some things. You will see my full sensitivity is there on uh, all metal, which is part of the reason she's making that noise. So let's turn that down. That'll take it down a bit. All metal sees everything. All metal is very good for checking signals. It actually can determine iron and hot rocks and coal and some signals better. And it is very good for checking it. It can also be good to run on a beach, depending on where you are in the world. I have a video all about that. Or it can be good to run on a field. It can be much quieter than the other modes. But boy, when you get a signal, you will know about it. And again, I have another video on that. So that is all metal. That's what that mode is. And again, nothing is notched out. Okay, I've talked about ground balancing. What does that mean? There's a whole video on ground balancing. You can go and watch it. It will explain why it's important. Suffice it to say, you need to do it. Therefore, how do you do it? Okay, back down to here. This is your panel. So remember, this is on and off. This is your settings button, which is going to actually um, change between these things down here at the bottom. This is your accept and reject button and also your pin pointer and also your ground balance. Uh, and then this moves you across the modes and this moves your sensitivity up and down. So, if we press this once, we get volume, two out of four. We press it twice, we get ground balancing. Ground balancing always starts at 90, that's what the machine does, but to ground balance manually, you would then go over to here. All right, let's get that back there. You would go over to here, you would press that down, you hold it down, and you go up and down until the machine beeps three times and that tells me my soil is at 60.5. If I'd run at 90 I would be missing signals. So if you want to come out of that it's it's gone too quick and it's come out but it's much better than it was on 2.68 so uh, that you barely had time to do anything and it was switching back so they've extended it and they've given you an out button so Again, once, twice on settings, and then if you want it to come out of that, the up arrow takes you back to your main screen. So, what else is in settings? One, volume. Two, ground balance. Three, iron audio. Mine is on three. Mine is on three because it's a frequency I have difficulty hearing, and I want to be able to hear the iron in relation to a signal. Therefore, I have my volume up loud so that it kind of counteracts the fact that I don't hear it as well. As long as you can hear iron, it does not need to be on three. Put it on one if your hearing is such that you hear it at the same level of the signal or you can hear it. It's important that you hear the iron. So one volume, two ground balancing, three iron audio, four accept or reject this is to notch out things and i'll do a completely separate video on that because it would be too long if i went through all of that we have the frequency you set the machine at that helps you with pinpointer chatter this is your um, 
Bluetooth Wi-Fi setting that basically says whether you are hooked up to your headphones or not. This is your vibration, your machine. You are very, very lucky in that your machine will vibrate for you, plus or minus turns it on, and you can actually run it without the beep, beep, beeps. If you wish, you can turn your volume right the way down, and you can come over to this, and you can turn your vibrations on or off with the plus or minus button, and it basically, you'll feel the machine vibrate in your hand. So that is what that is. And this is your torch set. If you want your torch on, plus, you want your torch off, minus. Back out. This is your backlighting uh, strength, so how much you want your backlight on and how long you want it to last. That's your torch, which we've just covered. So, I suppose I should explain to you how you change these things. So let's go back out. So, if you've got volume and you want to put it up, plus or minus. Plus goes up, minus goes down. Ground balancing, if you want to change it manually, say you wanted to put it at zero on a beach, plus or minus, and hold it down, and it will change manually, and you're sorted. Iron Audio, again, plus or minus, we'll take it down. Your Accept or Reject, we'll cover in another video. Again, plus or minus, we'll move it to the left or the right. Turning your Bluetooth for your headphones on and off, plus or minus. Okay, I think the last thing to cover is the pin pointer. Now, I do not have my headphones on, so when I turn this on, the machine is going to start chattering. This is a pulse dive. This is made by Nocta Macro, and if I had my headphones on, it would automatically mute my machine, which is fantastic, but I don't have my headphones on. So we turn it on, and the simplex goes mad because she doesn't like it. Press the button, the accept or reject button once, it mutes her. I can still feel her vibrating because I didn't turn the vibration off. When you turn a pin pointer on, you can adjust it using the frequencies, which is in that settings menu, and you can go to F1 or F3, and that can change whether the pin pointer is causing a problem. So let's flip ourselves through. Here we go, frequencies. That's frequency one. Frequency three, much quieter, much quieter, but Nocta Macro has said the machine works best in frequency two. So what you would do is you would put the machine through, keep it on frequency two, back out of there and mute it. So just a quick press of the pinpoint button mutes it and a second press unmutes it. And then that's it really. Let's just push this button and hold it down and that turns her off. So I think this video is probably long enough. That is the basic settings on the Nocta Macro that explains to you what the modes do, that explains to you what the settings are and how you can adjust them. It explains a bit about what I run and why. I didn't cover how to manually ground balance other than to say you press the button and pump the coil three times because I've done a separate video on that. I've done a separate video on setting it up for beaches, but that will show you what the screen looks like, what you want to change and how you want to change it. And um, I hope this is helpful to you. If it is, please let me know. If there's something else I can cover with a video, please let me know. And uh, now I'm going to go off and edit this and chop it together for all the bits that I pushed the button the wrong way. <laughs> and uh, get it out to you. So take care, be careful, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you again soon.